operating under the crooked American system too long. Outcast, pronounced outcast. Adjective meaning homeless or unaccepted in society. But let's look deeper than that. Are you an outcast? If you understand the basic principles and fundamental truths contained within this music, you probably are. If you think it's all about pimping O's and slamming Cadillac O's, then maybe you just don't understand. An outcast is someone who is not accepted as part of the normal world. He's looked at differently. He's not accepted because of his clothes, his hair, his skin color, his occupation, or his beliefs. Now look at yourself. Are you an outcast? I know I am. As a matter of fact, forget being anything else. There's only so much time left in this crazy world. Wake up and realize what's going on around you. Poisoning of the food and water, tampering of cigarettes, diseased engineering control over your life. Take back your existence or die like a pump. This is Big Rube saying right on to the real. Illuminative thinking. The idea that I want to share with you guys today is based on a series of epiphanies I've had over the last several years as a teacher. And it is based on my use of hip hop culture, the hip hop aesthetic, and these sensibilities, education and technology. And what I wanna do today is talk about this idea through something that I've come to call the outcast imagination. Outcast is, the outcast imagination is inspired by two individuals, Andre 3000 Benjamin, and Antoine Big Boy Patton. You've probably heard of Hey Y'all Where Andre Tells You to Shake It Like a Polaroid Picture. Or you've heard I Like the Way You Move, the nice groovy two-step that Antoine Big Boy Patton asked us to do on one of his songs. But before they reached uber success nationally and internationally, in 1994, their first album, Southern Playalistic Cadillac Music, there was a spoken word piece on there called True Dat and I just recited it. And in that spoken word piece, it articulated the risks, the rewards, the privileges of being different, of talking different, of looking different, of learning different, of practicing hip hop different. And what they said in 1994 was, the South got something to say. Regardless of where they were from, staying true to form, true to their identity, they proclaimed that the South had something to say. Well, I believe that these classrooms have something to say. And I believe that in the way that OutKast kept hip hop culture, capital H hip hop culture, at the core of their musical and artistic innovation, the same thing is possible in our classrooms. Keeping hip hop based Sensibilities, practices at the core of our classrooms can help develop science skills, math skills, the social justice capacities of youth, and their ethical leadership capacities, as well as their language art, writing, just as the kids that you saw perform earlier. Now, what does all of this mean? You've heard me say capital H hip hop. Now, capital H hip hop, as opposed to lower H hip hop, is not about glorifying violence, misogyny, or excessive materialism in the classroom. It's not just about the use of rap music. When I say capital H hip hop, I'm talking about hip hop based sensibilities, teaching to the spirit of a, of, a, of a student, creating a nurturing environment that allows them to tell their story and develop their voice. Number one, what Capital H Hip Hop does, it allows us to, A, promote engaged teaching and learning through rapping, MCing, DJing, break dancing, graffiti art, fashion, all of the practices that are associated with hip hop. The second thing that it does is it highlights the injustices of our world and our community, like the injustices of our school system. The third thing it does is it provides blueprints, calls of action, lesson plans, so to speak, for how to alleviate many of these injustices. Capital H Hip Hop is about looking good, dressing fly, being your absolute best, while repeating steps one, two, and three. I realized that I was an outcast in 1997 
when I was hired under emergency credential to teach math at a high school right outside LA. I was a first year teacher. For many of my students, I was their first teacher of color. The math department was predominantly white and male, and at 23, I was one of the youngest faculty members. And I was from the South. Not Southern California like my students, but Atlanta, Georgia, mixed with a little bit of Reef Farm in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And I listened to Capital H Hip Hop, and at the time, I was also writing for hip hop magazines about the educational potential of hip hop culture, because I'd already experienced it, so I knew what it could do. My teachers didn't get it. My colleagues didn't get it. My editors, they couldn't figure out why I wanted to write about hip hop then use it in the classroom in 1997, but these students did. These students did, but we couldn't really explain what we were doing. We just had to do it because hip hop had already been like that thread that had alleviated the differences or made the differences between us really irrelevant. So what do we do? We listen to instrumental music in the classroom. We applied the battling aesthetic of competition to board work. We, uh, uh, students wrote raps, songs, poetry about algebraic concepts, and we saw results. We saw increased student confidence. We saw scores go up. It was a nurturing environment, all utilizing capital H hip hop sensibilities. This idea of nurturing students and creating this very loving environment. So what's happening right now Fast forward 97 to 2012, 13, 14, another epiphany I have is how do we utilize hip hop education and technology and make it available for teachers, youth, and youth influencers who are interested in this type of work? So Virginia Tech has the 4-4 Beat Project, and it's part of this ongoing trend of taking hip-hop-based artifacts, using them to create activities for a classroom. But here's where 4-4 Beat is different. There is no hip-hop-based archive at an institute of technology. And there is no hip-hop-based archive located in a school of education. A school of education is where the magic happens. That's where you get the inclusive lessons and you get to try different things that are democratic and you get to develop the social justice capacities of teachers so that when they go out, they see themselves as social justice activists. Our guiding question has been, how do we represent hip hop, art, creativity, teaching and learning in a virtual space while also acting as a resource tool for teachers, students and educators? Well, the first thing we did, well, we, we developed a website. But how do people outside of the Virginia Tech community get, a, get access to these resources? Well, in this picture right here, you'll see this guy, Michael Webster. This was his room where he collected all of these vinyl records, and he was going to give these vinyl records away. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me get, them, let me get those vinyl records. I know what to do with them. He donated these vinyl records to the 44 Beat Project. The Institute for Creativity, Arts, and Technology and the School of Education got together and we acquired these resources from him. But how do we make this available outside of the Virginia Tech community? What you're seeing right here is the virtual room of the room that you just saw. You're standing or wa watching the room right now. This is a 3D representation of how the room will look on our website teachers, enthusiasts, um, digital humanists can go to this site and interact and have a digital experience with this room. But here's the other great thing. The main room will connect to a classroom, which will collect, connect to a museum exhibit and then connect to another museum exhibit. So the digital experience is also an educational one where you can go in and acquire these resources and implement lesson plans in the classroom. We'll be like the quick trip of hip hop education, the one stop shop to get all of your resources. I could have very well called this presentation, The Outlier's Imagination. Malcolm Gladwell talks about being on the fringes and operating on the fringes because on the fringes and being comfortable, that's where innovation happens. 
And we need innovation in our classrooms. We need to be able to close these gaps in our classrooms. And we need to be able to have creativity reestablished in our classrooms, according to Ken Robinson. So I challenge you all to think about and come visit the 4-4 Beat Project and consider implementing hip-hop-based education and sensibilities in your classrooms. Thank you.